You're listening to Turning a Page on Good Morning Delhi with Sartak. And what a lovely thing you're doing, uh, listening to the ideas, uh, the ideas that make up a story and uh, a story that is told, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, boxed into uh, the bookends of uh, the front cover and the back cover. It is very exciting to talk about books, I tell you, and uh, even more so to see if we can seduce you into loving the words. And uh, today, of course, uh, someone who's uh, uh, who's taken love and treated it uh, with so much emotion that. Uh, uh that her debut novel uh, won her uh the commonwealth prize as well and the dsc prize as well uh and that was of course last century so it's been a long time since she's been writing but uh, all that writing has gone uh, uh from the eye straight into the heart and made a home there uh the author who initially wrote difficult daughters uh, has now got out her seventh book it's called the gallery uh we are honored to have uh, manju kapoor with us ma'am thank you ever so much for joining us uh, on radio Thank you. Thank you for calling me. <laughs> it's it's wonderful that uh, uh, the fact that uh, um, uh, that difficult daughters was 1999 and now we are in 2023 and uh, and yet the comparisons don't seem to end. Uh, the new book of course is absolutely fabulous. It's called uh, uh, it's called The Gallery. It is uh, about the lives of uh, of two sets of people. Uh, you want to tell us a little more about the book before we proceed? Well, the book is about uh Uh, two sets of people as he said it's about uh, uh, a mistress and her maid and their two daughters and it's about uh, the trajectory of their lives and uh, how each family in a way impacts the other because we live quite close to our domestic staff and uh, in a way they imbibe ideas from us and how do those ideas play out in their lives ideas of independence ideas of love ideas of education ideas of culture all those things uh, you know uh, i've examined them so Yeah, so I don't want to give away the whole story. Uh, absolutely not. Absolutely, the these are mere morsels that people need to taste so that uh, uh, they serve the whole meal of the book very very soon. That's uh, that's very very important. Uh, but when did the idea germinate? It's, it, it's been a long time coming. This one, no. It has, it has, and I just take forever to write a book. I wish I didn't. I often wish I didn't. You know, two years is my benchmark, but it often, often, or if not always, stretches to five. The idea of this book came from really, you know, just looking at the lives of staff around me and my friends and relatives, and in a way, they're unknowable mm. because they come from such different backgrounds. and yet they live so close to you you know they're the people you see first thing in the morning last thing at night so what is the bond that unites the two obviously mm. there is a bond but what is its nature it's sure. not it's not friendship because we are not equals but mm. it is something what mm. is it that's sure. that's what interest in me does such a spectacular debut become a bit of a double edged sword ma'am <laughs> i mean considering <laughs> that everything else then sort of you know gets um, measured on the benchmark does it not well not for me mm. so you know uh i just uh, i mean as a writer i'm constantly challenging myself sure. because if i'm bored with my writing if i repeat myself i'm not going to be able to do a very good job why mm. do people write they write to explore issues they write to explore aspects of the the lives they see around them they write to be able to express the things they've thought in the clearest possible way that's why people that's why i write sure. okay so sure. this means i don't ever want to repeat myself though my subject matter in a way remains more or less constant sure but the variations on that subject matter change with every book sure so uh that's the way i look at it <laughs> also we we're, we're living in a very cynical sensitive world and the uh, the relationship that you've chosen to explore in the gallery is a fraught one right now you know uh, i mean uh, uh, the fact that you've used domestic staff as your muse so to speak um uh, you know and the fact that as you said uh, that uh, you know you said something that a lot of people would sort of raise their eye- eyebrows <laughs> at which is that we're not equals it's not friendship you know uh, was there a bit of a backlash Well, it's not out yet the book. Sure. So, so sure. 
but uh, when you shared the ideas with people uh, do you share first of all do you share your ideas about writing or is it completely solitary for you of course i don't share my ideas why mm-hmm. would i mm-hmm. those are my ideas and they co- <laughs> i don't share them because they're constantly changing sure if i if i told someone i'm writing about this or i'm writing about that you know it would be more fixed it's uh, the whole process of writing and the ideas that are generated within mm-hmm. a book mm-hmm. are very fluid so and i myself don't know where those ideas are going to lead me in the sense of a story sure i have an idea yes that's the idea of you know what is the you know the the, the lives of these people living together that's the idea sure but what story do i tell to bring out those ideas it has to be a readable book otherwise nobody's going to read my ideas for sure absolutely so, so what's your unique process of writing ma'am how does it start where does it go and how does it end it's all very painful hmm. because i <laughs> Uh, okay. uh, because the yeah. ideas are formulated while I write I don't have them beforehand okay and in the process of writing that's where they change you know can i write this is is this taking the story forward is this does this sound convincing does it sound authentic is this what people in these circumstances would feel is this what they would say and if i don't feel that then i backtrack So the story is really hammered out after or during repeated and painful mm. rewritings sure. you know so sure. that's why I don't discuss my books with anybody because I myself am not sure of you know how I'm going to present this sure. what the story is going you know if you looked at my first draft and you look at this mm-hmm. you'd say is this the same novel even the names have changed <laughs> <laughs> so everything has changed i can i can i can almost see a very harried editor <laughs> behind the book i'm sure but the editor does have a role to play does uh, do they not only right at the end you mm. know only when i have edited my book and edited it and edited it i'm the i'm my 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 most severe critic sure because and why is that because i know the book better than anyone because i've lived with it day in and day out hmm. for years hmm. Hmm. so it's only when i am completely satisfied that i send the book to my agent who sends it to publishers etc etc and then yes they have inputs which are useful because in a way i'm so close to the book i can't see it sure sure but they can and they'll give inputs and you know i'll work on them and see yeah uh, it's uh, uh, th- 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 did this whole solitary thing also um, uh, you know have a bit of a covid story to it did uh, did the whole uh, pandemic bit uh, affect in any way what you were writing uh, not yet but mm. uh, you know and i bring it in into my next novel during covid actually covid suited me down to the ground mm. <laughs> i didn't go anywhere i don't go anywhere anyway i don't see anybody i don't sure. see anybody anyway so <laughs> so my li- my lifestyle didn't change at all sure, you know sure. uh, so okay i washed my hands more and <laughs> But this uh, <laughs> this hermetically sealed lifestyle must mean that uh, you have to rely a lot on your imagination no i mean uh, human contact as uh, uh, as uh, as story it seems uh, that's more imagination than reality is it you know like a little story or human contact so far as ideas about your books are concerned goes a long way now i have one idea and it has you know i i mean it has little side routes like going mm-hmm. to nepal like for this book and for the research that went into it i went to nepal twice i visited villages i i visited kathmandu i visited art galleries i talked to people who were artists who who ran galleries and uh, stuff like that so a lot of so yes i am solitary in the writing of it but not in the research because sure. i have to go out there with my computer and my you know and record of course <laughs> you of know of course absolutely record what people say to me because my books i mean the way i am and the way i write have to be grounded in a social reality you sure. know that's what uh, at least for me makes my story move that it is familiar sure. okay 
Sure. Uh, and so for that, I, I do, you know, I travel, I interview, I meet people, I, I, I go to the library, I use the internet. So you do become social, you just call it work, <laughs> <laughs> which, is, which is wonderful. But uh, it brings me back to that question that I asked you earlier about, about the fact that we're living in a, in a sensitive world, a more sensitive world. Um, all the topics that you choose are also sensitive ones. Is there a little bit of second guessing now? Is there, uh, is there a little bit of thinking twice about what you're writing about because it might... Uh, uh, it might elicit reaction that might not be what you want to say? No, I mean, no. Uh, you know, I mean, I put that in my book also. I'll just quote from my own book. Yes, please. <laughs> Best way to do it. <laughs> you know, uh, the, I think it's from the first page that an artist has to have absolute freedom. Mm. Otherwise, they can't function. Mm. Now, if I started putting... Uh, blinkers on my imagination okay I can't go there it might offend somebody or I can't say this it's not quite okay then how would I operate how would I function I would not be able to do this sure. and for me that would be a kind of self-censorship that would be worse than anything sure okay. so and what about the tyranny of the social media considering that's become a bit of a marketing tool and uh, and it exercises its power over you know everyone says out of sight out of mind you have to be on social media uh, you have to be on the internet what are your views about that you know, marketing so to speak you know I have a publisher who will market me I mean that's what they're there for sure that's not my job okay I don't see this you as don't me. see that as your job no it's not okay. my job sure. my job my job which I take seriously is to produce the best possible book I can hmm. I want to produce a book that will last otherwise you know I'm working so hard I want as I said to do the best possible book that I've I can because I want it to last. Mm. You know, and you see when you go to bookshops or when you read about books, which are the books that last? Sure. You know, uh, sure. that's a great point. Uh, Na yeah. <laughs> Paul first, I mean, I don't know whether he first made it, but he said we write for posterity in that sense. Yeah. I want to be read when I'm dead and gone. Mm. I'm very clear about this. And that's so very poetic. I want to write. <laughs> I want to be read whether I'm dead. <laughs> that's a that's a great epitaph, actually. <laughs> but the, so so my words will live after sure, me, sure. and that's important to me. And where will social media be tomorrow or the next month? They'll be on to the next big thing. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this is in a way a book is. Sure. I mean, it lasts. <laughs> it's there. It's supposed it's, to last. If it's yeah. any good, it's yeah. supposed to last. Yeah. yeah. Um, research. I mean, you do write fiction, but uh, you also uh, lay a lot of emphasis on research. How how important is uh, is accuracy even in fiction, man? Uh, well, you know, it's important to get. Um, for example, in my last book, I talk about this: the daughter of the the maid taking the metro. Now, I have to know when the metro was built, where the metro lines are. The, can she take a metro from golf links to the university? For me, it's important to get that date right. For me, it's important to know what the metro does. Absolutely. In terms of uh, just transport. Sure. You know, who sure. takes the metro? What does it mean? How many people do you meet? Does the girl meet a boy? Yes, yeah, she does. What happens? Sure. You know, and so just for that, I need to know this and also the book is about art the growing Indian art market then I have to know about it now with some accuracy I can't, I can't just be yeah. shoot, <laughs> shooting I mean, off my can. mouth about art <laughs> absolutely in an inaccurate way yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> so, you can't talk about Raza's nudes without having seen them can you no, uh, yeah. I talk about the India art fair mm. I talk about the fact that it grows sure. then I have to talk about how many people come then I have to talk about the impact that has Sure, sure. on galleries of small course. galleries big galleries then I have to talk about the difference it makes to a gallery of people of the gallery coming to people rather than people coming to the gallery for sure absolutely which is what I got in an interview with a gallery <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's, it's it's important to know. You just can't, uh, uh, you know, hide behind the fig leaf of fiction to not talk about things that happen in real life. Only then will the fiction re f uh, feel real, which is which is very important. Is it uh, which is what all the best fiction does. Yes. You know, look yes. at Dickens. Absolutely. So, you know, yeah. I was a teacher of English literature for almost 30 years. So this also means I'm used to doing research. You know, I'm, sure. I'm used. So, and, you know, I just do it. But, you know, they say uh, fiction is 
what is the quote? I don't know. But fiction <laughs> is strong. Let's get you to let's get you to do your own quotes because we're looking <laughs> at social media. We'd okay. like you to make us a listicle. Three points that you'd like budding authors to keep in mind when they start writing, when they start taking their first tentative steps towards being becoming writers. You know, I'm asked about this. What mm. advice would you give? Mm. First advice is read. Mm. You know, because <laughs> yes, <laughs> benchmark. <laughs> sure. You know, reading is the other side of writing. How do people express experience? You know, there are hundreds of ways. What way resonates? You know, it's like, uh, okay, this is a world out there. You need to know it in order to deepen your own craft, your own approach to your craft, whatever it is. So the first thing is uh, read. The second thing is you have to be patient. You know, you have to be willing to put in those hours and hours of work. If you're going to write a book in order to, for some other end, then don't write, you know. It's too difficult. It's really difficult. (laughs) Yeah. Other ways are easier. (laughs) Other ways are easier. You know, do a blog, do a, I don't know, do a whatever. But don't do this. Don't do a novel. It's just too hard. Absolutely. You know, that's the second one. And, you know, the third one, I don't know if I can talk about grammar, but get your grammar... (laughs) Yes, please. <laughs> there is a reason why grammar was built. There is a reason why. You uh, know, your grammar yeah. has to be right. The teacher has spoken. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's important. And of course, if you want to uh, uh, get the exposition of what all of this looks like or reads like, the book is called uh, The Gallery. It is by the wonderful Manju Kapoor, who has graced us uh, with her presence and her wonderful thoughts right here on Turning a Page. Uh, can't thank you enough for this, ma'am. It has been absolutely wonderful. And I'm sure uh, the book is going to be absolutely fabulous as well. So all the best for that. Thank you. Thank you so much. (laughs) We are hoping that uh, some ideas got triggered a little. If they didn't, try. Try a little harder. We're taking a break. Coming right back right here on 94.3 Radio 1.